Ciao. 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 If you want to be a little bit more formal, you can say what? Well, we're not going to bed yet. You say when you're going to bed. When you're going to sleep. No, not yet. We say buonasera. Ah, buonasera. Good evening. Buona. Buonasera. Sera. All together is buonasera. Buonasera. Today is an important day in Italy because it's the beginning of Carnevale. Oh, wow. Carnevale is carnival. I think you are familiar. Originally in Italy the celebration of carnival was a celebration of the end of the winter and the beginning of the spring. It should be much later here in Boston, it's not really <laughs> <in> February. <laughs> in Italy, well, usually middle of February is a good time when it starts to get warmer and it's not spring but it's it's the beginning. So, Carnevale is carnival. It starts today and it will end on Tuesday, next Tuesday. Tuesday is Martedì. Martedì. And we call this specific Tuesday Martedì Grasso. Martedì Grasso. Grasso means fat. It's, yeah, it's Fat Tuesday. So, why is Fat Tuesday? Well, because typically we would eat very, very fat food. And uh, you have some examples here. These are some typical sweets that we eat for Carnevale. There are le chiacchiere. And le frittelle. They're both deep fried, so we're not going to eat them. They're not particularly healthy. But if you want the recipe, I can give you the recipe anyway. <laughs> They're very, very tasty. The idea is that this celebration was initially a pagan celebration, and then it became a Christian celebration, like a huge party where everything, or well, almost everything, is allowed before the beginning of Quaresima, the Lent. That is a period, well, period more of penitence, a period where many, um, many people decide, for example, to let go of some luxuries or some things they like. So it's like the last huge party, you can eat everything fat and afterwards maybe you decide, oh, I'm on a diet and um, I'm not going to eat anything. So for Carnevale, Carnival, people usually wear costumes, kind of like Halloween here, and mostly kids, like it's very unusual that you walk anywhere in Italy and you find everybody in costume. <laughs> but, well, there are like kids especially, and there are some parties, and there are some, I'm sorry for the quality, but you have a, a printout actually of the map of Italy. There are some huge, huge celebrations. The most famous are the Carnevale of Viareggio. Viareggio is in Tuscany. There is uh, il Carnevale di Ivrea. Ivrea is in Piemonte. And for the Carnevale of Ivrea, apart from wearing costume, there is also a very famous battle with oranges. People throw oranges. Okay. You if you Google it, you see the images is really, really something. <laughs> and then probably the most famous Carnival in Italy is il Carnevale di Venezia. Venice. There it is. So in Venezia, there are a lot of parades, and there are some uh, characteristic costumes, traditional <coughs> costumes. So you should enjoy Carnevale during the weekend. You have a long weekend for a different reason. Uh -huh. but <laughs> OK, enjoy Carnevale until Tuesday, until Martedì, because afterwards, we can't celebrate anymore. So let's try to review what you did. The idea is this. Each of you can stand up, look at the others, and say, ciao, mi chiamo, you say your name, and then just tell us something that you remember from last week. It can be anything we cook, it can be another sentence, it could be even just the way that we pronounce the letter A. That's A. Okay, you can come here and say, hey, ciao, mi chiamo Paola. Uh, we say, ah. 
A E I O the vowels. Ciao, uh, mi chiamo Clara. Piacere. Piacere. Uh, ciao, mi chiamo Scott. Carnevale. Ciao, mi chiamo Eliana. Uno. Ciao, mi chiamo Melina. Pacetta literally means tiny belly. So this is lezione numero due. Our second lesson. And I can ask each of you. Da dove vieni? Let's do it one word at a time. You remember, I omit the subject too, because it's not that important. Unless I really want to emphasize, then I, I, would, I would say. So I start from here. Da, da, da. da. Dove, dove. Vieni, vieni. Da, da, da. da. Dove? Dove? Vieni? Vieni? Vengo da Milano, in Italia. Vengo da Milano, in Italia. Ah, I don't think so. Si? No, no, no. Ok. Let's do another round. We can ask each other where we come from and you can say I come from wherever you come from. I said Milano, I'm not exactly from Milano, I'm from a small town close to Milan on a big lake, that's the largest lake in Italy, named Lake Garda. Lago? Garda. But I think that most you come from the Stati Uniti, United States. So, if that is the case, you can say vengo, vengo. da, let's say Boston, negli, so we have you, like I, Stati, Stati, Uniti, Uniti. So not U, but U. Uniti. Neri is inside. Is in T, yeah. Literally, in. Then Uni is the article, plural, masculine. So Stati is plural, masculine of the word Stato. That would be similar. Stato, stato. But lo stato is masculine. So if you have a feminine, it would be nelle. We will do a little bit more of this as we go, as we proceed. Okay, who wants to start? Clara. Clara. Tu da dove vieni? Vengo da Singapore. Singapore. Da dove vieni? Vengo da Monterrey, Messico. Eh, Mario, da dove vieni? Vengo da Texas, <laughs> negli Stati Uniti. So, Texas is not a city, it's a state. So you put the article and you say, Vengo dal. Dal. Texas. Dal. Dal. Texas. dal. Vengo dal, Texas, negli Stati Uniti. Molto bene. Ah, Sara, dove vieni tu? Uh, vengo da Anchorage, Negri, Alaska. In Alaska. Da... Da dove vieni? Uh, vengo da... Da Altejas, Texas. Ah, sì? Sì, negli Stati Uniti. Yeah, so now you know how to introduce yourself. How to say where you come from. Una cipolla. <laughs> Look around. Oh, Sarah. Anything else? Oh. Ooh, the cipolle. The cipolle. The cipolle. Do it. Oh. 
Quais dados? <risos> <risos> Finestra. 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 Questa cipolla è più grande di quelle cipolle. Vorrei messi lì. So we are trying to learn demonstrative adjectives. So in English you have this, that, these, those. Let's start with the singular. In Italian, we have questo, codesto, codesto, and quello, quello, masculine. Okay, you see they all end with an O, so that's masculine. How come that we have three choices instead of just two, this and that? Well, questo means this and it's something that is close to me when I'm talking about something that's close to me. Codesto is something that is far from me but is close to you. It's not really very common. You won't hear it when you talk to the other Italian unless she or he comes from Tuscany then there is a chance that they will use Codesto. But from now on we will just stick to Questo for this and quello, quello for that so quello in principle is when it's far from both of us so as I told you already last time in Italian we conjugate everything so if an adjective refers to a noun that's feminine or masculine the ending changes so in English you would say this onion and this book. In Italian, I would say questo, questo. quaderno, quaderno. Questa. Questa. questa, cipolla, cipolla. cipolla. So, questo, questo, and questa. Questa. questa, and for plural, if it's masculine, it becomes questi, questi. 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 and if it's feminine, it becomes queste. So, questo, questo, questa, questa, questi, questi, queste, queste. Okay, and now you can try to read without me what's going on with that and those. So let's see what I told you earlier. Questa. Questa. Come si dice? I forgot. Cipolla. Oh, cipolla. Questa. Adjective. Singular. Femini. Cipolla. E. 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 Più. Più. Grande. Is bigger. D. That would be then. Quelle. Quelle what? Cipolle. Sulla finestra. <laughs> Sulla finestra. Finestra. Since we want to go ahead and learn how to say Sulla, let's see exactly where this word comes from. Sulla is a composition of su, that means on, and la. La would be the article for finestra. And then we just 
put them together, and it becomes sulla. Okay, so take it some time and try, you can discuss, you can do this together. Try to come out with some new ten sentences involving the adjectivity mostrativi and some of the words that you already know. If I want to say this, aglio, questo aglio, quell'aglio, yes, it would be quello aglio, and then let me write it down actually. <laughs> so if we say quello aglio, people look at you like, where do you come from? <laughs> United States? But <laughs> 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 what we do, we have these two vowels. We, we, do, we get rid of one of the vowels. We put an apostrophe, that little sign is an apostrophe. And it becomes quell'aglio. Quell 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 you could say quest'aglio or questo aglio. Oh. Yeah. And I just remember that I have something else. Oh, I told you that pomodoro meant kind of golden yeah. apple. So yeah, one way to refer to apples and pears is to call them pomi. Pomo. Plural, pomo. so un pomo. 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 Typically, if you are talking about this fruit, then you say, you call it mela. 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 Like mela. melina means little mela. Your name? <laughs> <laughs> means little mela. So, mela or mela? Mela. Mela. So, this fruit is mela. 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 And I can say, questa mela, questa mela. Questa mela. è rossa. Eh, rossa. Rossa. What does it mean? This red. 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 Whoa. I actually have two. Oh, yeah. So it was questa, now I have two. It's plural. Queste. 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 Mela. Mele. 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 E rossa. So, no, so what we are saying, Yes. When we have only one, questa. Who wants to write the next? Very good. Bravissima. She put the double consonant. Yes. Now I have two. So I would say queste, mele. So you see, we don't add an S like in English to make the plural. We change the ending of the word. Mela, mele. We also have a new verb, sono. Hmm. Who wants to write the next word? No, no decimos también. Sí. Sono. Gracias. Bravísimo. No, soy. Sono. No quiere decir sono, también soy. Sono. Sono significa que I am. Yes. Ah, it okay. means okay. I am okay. as well. That's where I am. Yes. Sono. Next time we will actually conjugate the whole verb mm -hmm. to be in the present. Okay. So, questa mela è rossa. And. Good. Chi ha fame? Who is hungry? Adesso cuciniamo. E poi mangiamo. Mangiamo. Perché abbiamo fame. We're very hungry. Abbiamo molta fame. So, tonight we're going to cook. A dish that's typical from northern Italy is called risotto. Risotto.